Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So excited for today's video. I'm going to be talking about the brand new Pat McGrath Labs Celestial Divinity Luxe Quad. I got all three of them. So if you want to hear my thoughts, see a tutorial for each and just kind of see what each quad has to offer, then just keep watching. <laughs> Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new products on the market and then sharing them with you guys. And today we're gonna talk about the additions to the Pat McGrath Holiday Collection. Now, of course, in the collection, the Celestial Divinity palette is already out. That's a pretty big palette, but she also came out with three mini quads in the collection as well. I also did order the highlighter, but that is not set to ship out until October 19th. So I will do a luxury highlighter video with that one, the Natasha Denona, Charlotte Tilbury, and the Dior ones. So you will see that highlighter once I get it. For now, all I have are the quads. I didn't order any of the lip products, but the lip products are available for purchase right now also. First and foremost, you're probably wondering, how do you have yours already? Because the shipping with Pat McGrath lately has been... I'm sorry, it's been awful. <laughs> I'm a Pat McGrath stan, but I think the way that they're handling their shipping is just not right. At least send out an apology or something. I know for me, I do live pretty close to their distribution factory. So that is why I'm always lucky enough to get the products relatively early. Back in the day, I used to get them like next day shipping without having to pay next day shipping. And now I no longer get that. The Celestial Divinity almost took two weeks and then we have of this hot mess here. I know a lot of you guys haven't even gotten shipping notifications. I didn't get a shipping notification. These just so happened to show up at my doorstep today, right when I was eating lunch, about to get ready to film after lunch, they showed up. So that's why I was like, oh, perfect. But yeah, they're not handling it right on the business side. You know, I feel like people would be much more understanding if they just sent an email letting you know. So with that being said, two of these three palettes are currently available on Sephora, the Interstellar Icon, and the Risqué Rose. So if this video leaves you wanting either of those two, maybe purchase them from Sephora, you know? Shipping, returning, it's a little bit more reliable that way. Anyways, let's, with that being said, let's get into the main details of these guys. So this isn't her first time releasing quads. Last year, she also released three other quads. This year, we have some new ones, but these are set up different because the ones last year were all her Blitz Astral Formula made in Italy. These guys get a little bit more variety as far as the textures go. So let's talk about the packaging first and foremost. They all come in the same packaging as last year's as well. So it's just a really nice, simple, compact. I really like it. It is the typical Pat McGrath kind of packaging, but in a cute, nice little quad. So I really love these because I'm so used to seeing the big ones. I love seeing them in a smaller size. And then when you open them up, it is a magnetic closure. You do have a big mirror. And then of course, that's going to show your four shades. Very simple. They all come with corresponding boxes as well. Interstellar Icons, the blue. Risqué Rose is the pinky one. And then Fleur Fantasy is the more lavender one. Absolutely beautiful box as per usual. I've been throwing mine away, but I think I think I'm gonna start keeping them for photography purposes because they're stunning. And on the actual component themselves, these do have the names on the back, which is very convenient. This is a new thing that Pat recently started doing. And for naming the shades and stuff, it's just better and easier. So here's something that's very interesting that I wanna name first before I get into the individual palettes. But Fantasy Fleur, which is this lavender one, and then Interstellar Icon, which is the smoky one. Both of these have a 12 month shelf life and are made in USA of US and imported ingredients. Whereas the Risqué Rose, this one actually has a 24 month shelf life as opposed to 12 and it's just made in Italy. And Pat McGrath's big mothership palettes are all made in Italy and it does seem like within the last year she's started to make palettes that say made in the USA and of imported ingredients where previously it was just either Italy or USA for her six pan palette. It's very interesting that these two are made in USA of imported ingredients as well and then this one is the only one made in Italy. Though I do have my speculations why but I will get into that when we get into the individual palette for this guy. Last and final facts before we really dive into it, these are all 
$58 each. Again, you're only getting four shades. I think these have very special formulas. So for me, as a Pat McGrath collector and lover, I'm very excited for these. And while $58 is quite pricey, there also is a bundle deal for $148 on the Pat McGrath website. You can get all of these, or you can maybe wait for the Sephora sale that's coming up if you're only interested in the two that are on sale right now. Without further ado, let's head into the palettes individually so you can really see how they all work, what formulas they have, all that good stuff. So the first palette that we are going to get into is Interstellar Icon. So this one has a gorgeous blue shade that really stands out in this palette. There is a blue from last year's. They are different textures though, completely, because this is actually like a purple blue duochrome. So where it looked very blue right there when you turn it it's purple so completely different from last year's you're not getting any mattes in this one so you have a luminous rose gold a electric warm blue metallic this one is going to be that duochrome an iridescent bronze taupe this one is gorgeous and this deepened burgundy sheen so this one i would say is more of a satin shimmer this one is a really shiny shimmer so this one's going to give you a lot of impact here a lot of glitter and let me just swatch the other two live for you. So here's that rose gold, that gorgeous duochrome, and the burgundy. So this guy you're really going to enjoy if you are looking for some smoky eyes for this season. I think this is a beautiful winter palette. This one is pretty great because if you use these three, you can get a pretty neutral smoky eye. And then you also have this shade for a really fun pop of color to add to your smoky eye. You can just use these two. There are a few different directions that you can go with this guy. I think a lot of you might feel uncomfortable maybe because this is an all shimmer palette, but this shade does does blend out to work well as a crease shade but beware because it doesn't stay burgundy it almost blends out to a bit of a gray color and you'll see that in the tutorial overall I will say the formula in here is very nice there is no special shades or bliss astral shades in this one the most special shade that you're going to get is this shade right here but all of the shades are very beautiful very high quality I don't think there's a dud in this palette at all and I think it's an interesting mix of colors great for the season so this one's a really fun one so I'm gonna take you guys straight to the tutorial so you can really see how these shades work with a BK 201 we're taking this shade right here so I placed it in the outer corner I'm gonna spread as you can see this shade has a very black base to it so be very careful when using it this palette is going to be great for a smoky eye so with this shade if you really want that burgundy color you're gonna have to build it up with a finger but since I'm just using it as a transition shade I'm gonna keep it light just like that. Now I'm taking a shader brush and I'm using that same shade and I do want to build up the depth right out here so you can see that the color does build up and it easily blends out as well. Next we're going to take the duochrome shade. This has such a gorgeous shift. I'm so excited for this color. It is so stunning. This is definitely the showstopper in this quad and I'm using this completely dry, only concealer as my primer, no sticky base. That's beautiful. BK207, we're taking this shade right here. So this shade is gonna make an incredible lid shade for a smoky eye. But for the sake of this video and using all of the shades, I'm gonna run this along my lower lash line. Now this shade is very, very glittery. I don't think normally I would use it in this fashion, but I did want you to see it in action. And I think these two paired together would make a beautiful look. Next, we're gonna take the shade right here. This is like a pinky golden shade with some peach to it. Really beautiful as the inner and outer corner highlight. I'm gonna rebuild this color out here. All right, really nice. I'm gonna do liner and lashes and then you'll see the final look. So here is the final look with lashes for Interstellar Icon. Absolutely stunning, perfect for winter. Overall, I definitely think this is a good one. I don't think there are any duds. And if the color story in here speaks to you, I do recommend this one. So now let's take a look at Fleur Fantasy. So this one is more of that lavender one. This one definitely is going to give you a more light ethereal eye. This quad really reminds me of springtime. I feel like this is a palette that I would bring out in the spring. It's just very light. So in this 
quad, you are getting a pale rose gold highlight. Then you're going to get a duochrome. This is a lavender shimmer with blue flash. Then you're going to get a warm magenta metallic with purple flash. And then you're going to get a matte in this one. So this has a peach pink matte. Every single color in here is a different finish, which I really like. And the showstopper of this palette is going to be the shade called Lavender Blue because it is such a strong, gorgeous duochrome and it applies very, very bright to the eyelid as well. It's very pigmented. You don't need a base. However, I will say the shade that I wasn't too crazy about was this metallic right here. I found it to be slightly chunky when trying to apply it to the eyelid. So when I just swatched it on my hand, it applied with full opacity, really gorgeous. But I think with the shift, it almost is close to skin tone, so it's hard to see. Um, and it was falling all over my face. So with this shade, make sure that you do use a glitter glue or at least your brush wet or something because I think it was just a bit too messy for me. I wasn't a big fan of this, but everything else in the quad was really great. So personally, while I'm not the biggest fan of this, it is a gorgeous shade. And overall, I think this is a very nice, fun mix of colors. If this is a color story for you, I don't think this is going to be everybody's color story, but I am particularly in love with this duochrome shade. So I would almost recommend this quad for this duochrome shade. The corresponding colors are nice. This is the only one that I'm still a little bit unsure of, but let's get into the tutorial so you can see this guy in action. BK201 and I'm taking this peach shade right here. So I do like that this quad has a matte in it. I think a lot of people will appreciate that. And I'm just gonna lightly blend this gorgeous peach shade all over my crease. This is also gonna go along the lower lash line as well. Wayne Goss 7 brush and we're using this gorgeous lilac duochrome. I am so excited for this shade. Again, this is completely dry and Oof, this is gorgeous, extremely high quality. I'm gonna take the tip of my brush and that's gonna go on the inner half of the lower lash line. Using the same brush, we're going into this shade. So this one will probably need glitter glue. Yeah, so you can see on this brush, it's not picking up quite so well. I'm gonna take my finger. I would definitely recommend using a glitter glue to get the most out of this shade. This one potentially is a little bit more difficult to work with. I don't find it to be as flattering on the eye. It kind of looks a bit chunky. Honestly, the way I would recommend wearing this shade would be alone as a really cool wash, but I'm not really vibing with it on the outer half of my eyelid. Finally, we're gonna take this shade right here and we're gonna apply this to the inner corner. This is pure fairy vibes. Very nice, I love it. Okay, I'm gonna show you the final look. And here is the final look for Fleur Fantasy. Really light and gorgeous. So I really did love the look for that one and I can't wait to play with this one more, particularly to get used to this shade right here. So this is the only quad that is not available on Sephora. So if you do want it, you do need to pick it up from the Pat McGrath website, but it's really nice and it's really fun. And I love how different each of these palettes are. So none of these are going to be too close to each other, which I really like. So you're getting three completely complete different looks with each one. All right guys, so let's move into the last and final quad, Risque Rose. So this one is available on Sephora also. This is the one that is made in Italy with a twice as long shelf life. Now the reason that I presume this is made in Italy is due to these two formulas right here. So this shade I would definitely say is that special formula that you would find in her Mothership palette. Now it's not the exact same formula as say these Blitz Astrals. It's a very fine glitter duochrome kind of finish that you'll see right here. I'm sorry, my hand is dirty, but you'll see this is a special shade from Pat McGrath. So right here, I think this is what shoots this palette to the top because it has this formula. So that's why I think this is made in Italy. And I think while they were at it, probably this shade was made in Italy because this is a little bit more wet and creamy than the other shades in the other palettes. You can almost see it in the pan. Maybe not, but it's more creamy than others. It's almost like a powder cream mixed formula. Very gorgeous. As far as the other two, I would say this is a slight satin shade. And then this one is a complete matte shade. So again, four completely different formulas in this one. So they describe this as a matte. I would say it's more of a satin. Then you have this blackened brown shade. Then you're going to get this copper rose shade. And then finally we have lavendering. So they describe lavendering as a duochrome platinum 
Sparkle with Lavender Flash. And as soon as I put it on my lid, I didn't even look at the shade name, but as soon as I put it on my lid, I knew it was based off of the Lavendering Lip Gloss from Pat McGrath. So that's going to look like this. So this is this lip gloss in eyeshadow form, which I think is perfect. I think it's even better as an eyeshadow. That's what's on the center of my lid right now. So I do have a little bit of Lavendering on my lips right now to match the center of my lid, but I absolutely love this shade. Overall, I really love how this quad is curated. I think you get the best of Pat McGrath's formulas. I think her satin blends out super creamy. The matte is so extremely pigmented, but still on the easier side to work with. A super wet, creamy shimmer, and then of course a glittery shade. So I think as far as wanting to get the Pat McGrath experience, this is the quad that you're going to get that true experience with. So that's why I would highly recommend this one. So let's take a look at the tutorial. You can see how I got this look, and then I'll come back with my final roundup of my thoughts. We're gonna start off with the hot pink shade all over the crease. I like this shade because it's very easy to build. Like you don't get too much pigmentation right away, but you can build it up if you want more color and you can blend it out if you want something softer. So I think quality like this is really great for people who might not be quite so comfortable with instant pigmentation. So I'm just using my brush and I'm blending out the pink pretty far. Now this look isn't a hot pink look, so I'm not going to build it up too terribly much, but we definitely want pink. Just so you can see how much punch this shade can have. If you use a denser brush, see how much more pink that is just with a dense brush, not a soft brush. And again, we're going to blend this out. Next, we are going into the chocolate shade. As per usual with Pat McGrath, the quality on this particular shadow is so nice. As you can see, you want to pat first because it's a lot of pigmentation to begin with. And then slowly work the color out. I'm also gonna take a touch of this along the lower lash line for depth. Next, we're gonna take this shade right here. Now this shade is more creamy than the other shades in the other palettes. This is the only one of this shimmer formula that has kind of that wet feeling, very similar to what you might find in Charlotte Tilbury or even some of my old Pure palettes. They have this very wet formulation. And then finally, we're gonna take Lavendering. Now I would consider this a special formula, like a Blitz Astral formula. The ones that you would find in the Mothership palettes, the big ones. So this is the only quad that has that and this shade is so special. And you can see I'm just putting this on the center of the lid to focus and then I'm blending it out all over the outer half. That is such a special shade. All right, liner, lashes, I'll be back. And here is the final look with lashes and I also put on Lavendering Lip Gloss, which is what the lid shade is based off of. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial. Let's get into the nitty gritty of my final thoughts of these palettes. Overall, I really do enjoy them and I don't think maybe you'll need all three. While they do all give you a very different look, if there is a certain look that you know you aren't going to wear or a color story you're not going to wear, then don't go for it. As far as what my recommendations are, like I said, if you do want that Pat McGrath experience with a variety of her different formulas, I would go for Risqué Rose. This probably isn't my favorite color story as far as what I would use, but I do think formulation-wise, it is the best. My second favorite has to be Interstellar Icon. Again, this is just going to give you that Pat McGrath color story. I think this duochrome is just so gorgeous, and this is perfect for winter. So while I probably won't grab for this maybe as much, I love love the color story here and it's a little bit more unique to my collection. I don't think I have a palette with a color story quite like this. And while I do think Fleur Fantasy is very nice, I just am not in love with it as much as I am the other two. This duochrome shade though, I would still pick it up for the duochrome shade if I'm being honest. But yeah, it's just a lighter look, which I don't think is bad at all. Uh, like I said, maybe for $58 and mean but not being crazy about this shade, I don't know. But I do think a lot of people, this will be your favorite shade. So it just depends on if you think you would use this palette. But as far as my personal preferences and what I would personally recommend, you know, Risqué Rose, number one, Interstellar Icon, number two. And then even though I still like Blur Fantasy, if you wanna skip on one, that's the one that I would skip on. So so that is all I have for today's video, you guys. I hope you found it helpful. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would absolutely love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.